Okay, guys, very good. We'll get going. We're only 16 minutes late. So, who's currently picked up a little bit of a niggle, a little bit of an injury? Put your hand to the screen like that if you've got it. Okay, we'll go around then. Dan the man, what have you got? You have to unmute yourself, guys, when you're telling me. Uh, I got my knees and then like some really bad doms from yesterday. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, you will do because you haven't trained very much. Does anyone know what DOMS is? Something like muscle DOMS. Yeah, isn't it muscle tone? Are you trying to tell us, Zach, or are you telling me that you've got an injury? I've got injury, not, I'm not okay. telling who, you. Who knows? Like, Dan there has just said, oh, I've got really bad DOMS. Does anyone know what DOMS is? Because this is really important in terms of your injuries as well, guys, and understanding your bodies. So do you know what the word DOMS refers to? Is it like something offset muscle soreness? You said that. Josh, did you just say that? Yeah. Yeah. Delayed onset of muscle soreness. D-O-M-S. Okay, DOMS. Okay. Does anyone know why it happens? It basically means you get sore, like with a bit of a delay after you've done some training or some exercise. Does anybody know why or what it is and why it is? Why you get delayed onset of muscle soreness? Because you don't cool down. You don't stretch. No, not quite. Does anybody else know? Because okay, this is really important in understanding if you're injured or if you're sore, because they're two very different things. Is it because after you train, you've just broke down so much muscle and it's trying to regrow? Good knowledge. Good knowledge, Dan. So I said to Dan, you haven't trained that much recently, Dan, so it's not a surprise. So basically, if your muscles aren't conditioned, so they haven't been, you haven't been training and doing that type of movement or that type of exercise, then your body is not used to it. Your muscle isn't used to those forces and moving like that. So what happens is your body goes, you're not ready for this. And you get little mini micro tears in your muscle, not bad ones, but little micro tears because that's the signal to your body to regrow the muscle the muscle fibers a little bit stronger to cope with those exercises. Okay. So if Dan hasn't stopped and started and changed direction playing football, his muscles will be a little bit torn. Those little micro tears in the type of movements that are required for football. And what his body will be doing now is trying to repair those muscles and make them stronger. But whilst it's repairing the body, it doesn't want you running around doing the same exercises, making the muscles even more sore. So what it does is after 24 hours of doing the exercise, your muscles are sore. Okay. After 48 hours of exercise, they're really sore. And sometimes even like three days or 72 hours after doing the exercise, they can be really, really sore. Depends on how, how, extreme the exercise you've done is. Does that all make sense, guys? Yeah. Has anybody ever had that before where they've gone, God, I feel so sore still after like two or three days? Yeah. Okay. If you can remember that, can you remember what you did that caused that? What exercise you did or what, what, um, what sport you did that made it feel like that? Anyone give us an example? All right, but you just know the feeling, okay? Usually it's from doing exercise your body is not familiar with. So if you've never done weight training before and you suddenly go and start doing bench press and some squats and things with weight on it, your body will go, no, not ready for that and will start to get sore, okay? To stop you doing the exercise 
whilst your body recovers. Okay, so that's, you need to understand what that feels like. Sometimes you just get it a little bit. Um, sometimes it might just be in certain muscles, but that is different to an injury. Okay, so your knees, Dan, is from Osgood's, isn't it? You've got Osgood Slatus. Yeah. Now, all of you need to understand what that is. Who, who knows what Osgood Slatus is in your knees? You're growing too much for your bodies, like your muscles to grow as well. Yeah, good. When you grow, guys, just to explain what Brian said there, your skeleton grows first, okay? And then your muscles catch up. But whilst your skeleton is getting longer, your muscles are in like a form of stretch. So they're under more tension. And Osgood's is where the quads and those muscles around your knee are a lot tighter and they pull on your knee a little bit more. So sometimes if you don't, if your muscles don't catch up, where it pulls on your knee, pulls on the, the bone underneath your knee through the, the tendons that hold your kneecap in place. Okay, that irritation of the, that part of your, sh the top of your shin just below your knee is called Osgood Slatus. Okay, and it can happen a lot in growth. Okay. What have you injured, Zach? Oh, it's my Achilles. Your Achilles, now. When you, when your skeleton grows, guys, the other... There's two other areas that can be affected as well. You've got your knees, like we said with Dan, and we've also got the back of the ankle because that's kind of the same thing. If your shin bone grows longer, then your calf and those muscles and also your Achilles can pull on your heel bone a little bit. Okay, that's called Sever's disease. That's the same thing in your ankle as you can get in your knee. Now, Zach, is it actually hurting in your Achilles tendon? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's when I walk. Yeah, yeah. When, when you walk, does it hurt on the back of the bone of your, of your foot or does it hurt like higher up where the Achilles tendon is? Uh, a bit more back, not as high up. Right, okay. So you could be, start, you could be getting that pulling on the, on the back of your heel through your Achilles tendon. Now, again, it's the same thing. Tight calf. Pulling on the Achilles more puts more pressure on that part of your body um, when you're doing that. Okay. Who else is injured? Josh, what have you got? Oh, no, I've, I've not got one. You've not got an injury? No. no. Marley, I know, I know yours because you emailed me. But yeah, tell, tell everyone else. Uh, my hamstring. Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, your hamstring. Did you train yesterday, Marley? Oh, uh, yeah, I did go. How was it? Uh, I felt it was all right. It wasn't hurting too bad. Okay. You, you, need to, you need to ease off any of the practice that I've said, and you need to do those things with the ice and the hot and cold until Friday, okay? If you're going yeah. to do training, do some upper body stuff and that type of thing. Who else has got an injury? Because I know that there's about five of you. Will Gand, what have you done, Gandhi? Um, my hamstring and my, both my knees, but mainly my left knee. You might need to turn your volume up a little bit, Gandhi. It's quite quiet. You said your hamstring and... My knee, my knee. On your knee, okay. Yeah. All right. So it could be a little bit too that close. Um, who else? Ball A's, what have you done? Um, I've hurt my quads a little bit. Your quads? Yeah. Okay. All right. Middle of the quads? Um, yeah, it's all up. All up the all of the quads, really. All the way up the quads. You've been doing any shooting or anything different? Pardon? Have you been doing any shooting or anything different in your own practice before? You no. No, it's just um, when uh, on the game on Sunday. I mean, Saturday. The game on Saturday, and then you're probably still sore, and then training yesterday. <laughs> You've probably just exhausted your quads by the sound of it. And if they're a bit too tired, then they've maybe 
tweaked a little bit, possibly. Yeah. So yours could be really bad soreness from the sounds of it, or it might be that you've pulled them a little bit. I think, it, I think it's got an impact, isn't it? It's got an impact. Sorry, mate? Well, it'd be like an impact in the like, like, oh, so did, did you get kicked on it or kneed on it? Um, I think a lot of fell onto a sword when it's on Astro and like, kind of like, impacted. Did you get like a dead leg or something? Yeah, I think, I don't know. That can, that can affect yes. And you, Sam, what have you done? Um, yeah. Your hip. 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 Same, same place. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> today, guys, there's been quite a few injuries and things. And with your age, we thought it'd be really important, um, important to go through a good stretching routine with you, the sort of thing that you can do at home. Okay. How many of you have played with Finns before, with the Finnish kids in tournaments at different times? Yeah, quite a lot of you have at different times, haven't you? Okay, now, do you remember anything about how they stretch and what they do after games? <laughs> Anyone got any comments on that? Or not. Anyway, they have a really good knowledge of doing their stretching. I think because most of their coaches would prefer to teach stretching than football because they don't know as much about football. So they're really good at understanding their bodies like that. And they all, a lot of them have their own stretching stuff that they do at home. Okay. Now you guys need to probably get into that unless you want to continue having niggling knees, niggling um, Achilles and just a general feeling of tightness, okay? You might still get that because growth is growth. You can't completely control that. But the bet, but what you can do is try to prepare your body and look after your body the best you can so that you can deal with those things, okay? Now, just a little thing on your knowledge. How long do you need to hold stretches for um, to get, like, flexibility in the muscles what sort of timing are you looking for to hold each stretch if you're trying to get a little bit more flexibility in the muscle isn't it like 20 to 30 seconds yeah 20 to 30 seconds probably 30 would be a good example and when you're stretching like that guys do you hold the same length of stretch for 30 seconds so for example if i stretch my quad I hold my quad in a stretch and then I just hold it there for 30 seconds. Is that how I stretch it? Zacho? Uh, you just try and make the stretch so it hurts more, so you get more out of it. Not hurts more. And this is where, again, understanding your body is... Some, some stretches are a little bit more uncomfortable, but it should never really hurt. You should just feel the stretch in the muscle, okay? So in a 30 second stretch, you probably want to be holding for about 15 seconds, concentrating on your breathing and letting the muscle relax. And then just ease a little bit more into the stretch for the second half of that 30 seconds, okay? But you never force it and never make it really painful, okay? So that's an important thing to understand. And breathing helps your muscles relax. So those, those things are really important, okay? Now, if Dan has still got really bad DOMS, should he do flexibility stretching now? Anyone think no. yes? Anyone think no? Good, you're quite quick there, Charlie. Why would you say no for doing flexibility he, stretching now if he's got DOMS? He needs to wait for them to um, catch up. So for the muscles to catch up with them. Yeah, needs to wait for them to heal a little bit, doesn't he? Because if you've got little mini tears from doing unfamiliar work, then you doing a long hold stretch to try and lengthen the muscle out will probably do a little bit extra damage and make the DOMS last a little bit longer. Okay, 
you won't probably get a pull, but what you'll do is you'll make the soreness last longer. So again, that's another really important thing in understanding your body and understanding how your muscles work. The reason I can tell you all this is because I've done all of these things wrong many, many times in learning this stuff. I know what, um, what to do and what not to do pretty well. Some of you, the things I'm telling you will, should work for you anyway, but you might, as you understand your body more as you get older, you might understand how to do it um, better and a way that works even even more suited to your body. But what I'm gonna show you now is a little bit of a stretching routine for all the muscles in your body to give you that overall flexibility and uh, some different ideas for these things, okay? Is anybody pretty confident that their stretching that they do, Bob, change that. Does anybody do stretching regularly on their own at home? Yeah, okay, good. Well done, being honest. And Dan, the only reason you're doing it is because you've got injuries. Yep. All right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily do it to prevent injury. But if you do this, guys, you hopefully won't get as many injuries. Keep doing this. Does anybody have a foam roller at home, by the way, guys? Okay. Now, you should get yourself one of these. Okay, that's just bit of a weird shape one but that's a foam roller that's for rolling up and down your muscles just to help them loosen off a little bit and it's a good thing to do before you stretch just because it gets the muscles working out of it has anyone used any of these one of these before yeah okay. who hasn't used one put your hand to the screen if you haven't used one skylar have you used one or are you watching telly I've used one. You've used one. Okay. Good. Forty like that one, didn't you, Forty? Um. So, yeah, get yourself one of these. I'll show you some exercises you can do with them. And I'll talk you through them. Okay. And then we'll go into some stretching, working from the body up. Okay. So. With this, guys, if you've got like the gallery view where you can see everybody, can you change that so that I'm the big video on your screen? Okay. Just so that it's easier for you to see. Okay. So. Down a bit. Okay. So, with the roller, the main ones that you need to do. Glutes, hamstrings, calves, quads, sides of your legs, hips, and back. Okay? So, with these, you can have your legs out like that, and you can just roll over it like that. Okay? You're going to do 10 of each, just as like a little bit of a warm up for your stretching. It's good. These cost about five quid. Okay? They're not expensive, and they're very good for using in terms of your flexibility and just loosening your muscles. You cross your legs over and just do one of your glutes, one of your backside muscles, okay? Just to put a little bit more pressure on that side. That works well. And then with your hamstrings, if your hamstrings are quite sore and you haven't rolled before, you can put both hamstrings on the roller and just give them a little bit of a roll. If you're used to it, you can cross your feet over. There's a bit more weight and you do one hamstring, okay, like that. Okay, again, you do ten. Okay. With your calves, you can do the same thing. You put both on, and it's a little bit of an easier sort of exercise on each on the uh, on the calves. If you want to put more pressure on, you can cross your legs over, and more weight goes through the one calf. Okay, so you put in a little bit more pressure. Next one is your back. So you roll the roller all the way at your back. You want to exaggerate your low back, you can do that. You want to do your upper back there. Just hold your arms where it's comfortable. 
keep your chin on your chest to the networking, yeah? Okay, and then this one, a very good one. Easier, these can get very tight down the side of your legs. Okay, and they're really hard to stretch. So there's two ways to do this. You can put this leg on the ground, okay, and roll like that. Again, because your leg is on the ground, all your weight is not going through the roller so much. But you can also put two legs up, and then there's more weight going through. Don't worry if the first time you do that, you're like, oh my god, that is killing me. Okay, it will do, um, probably. So that's why I start off on the easy one with your leg on the floor, and then progress to that. I do this rolling quite a lot, so the side of my legs doesn't hurt so much. Next bit is bearing your hip. Okay, quite an important one. So you rest that part of your hip on the roller, and then you just roll back and forth. Right? A little bit of a massage in there, just to loosen up your hip. Because your hips can get very tight when you're doing your skills, when you're doing your striking a ball shooting. Okay. Next one, quads. You rest both your quads on the roller, hands out in front, and just rock over like that. Just roll up and down, then, and you do the other hip and the other side of your leg. There's a little circuit you can do with those to understand how to work that. It's just like putting a rolling pin on your muscle, really, just to eke it out a little bit. Okay. So I'll show you from the ground up. Okay. So, starting from the ground up, work on your Achilles. So, feet parallel like that, and you're just going to sort of sit down and push your back heel into the floor. Both feet are flat, okay? You should get a bit of a stretch down the lower part of your calf and into your Achilles. Okay? So, if you did that, hold for 30 seconds. And your legs, 30 seconds. Okay. And then you probably do two sets of 30 seconds on each leg. I'm going to show you one other one. Do you see that? No. So, another good one for your lower ankle and your Achilles. What you do is you take your toes and put them about 10 centimeters away from the wall okay i'm going to use okay and imagine this is a wall and you're just going to go like that you touch your knee on the wall Did that for sort of eight okay when that gets comfortable just move your toes back one centimeter so do it again Move it back another centimeter. It only needs to be one centimeter because it gets quite a stretch. You just probably saw my heel come off the ground there. Okay. So it's just nice and easy. And all you're doing is getting some movement and mobility in your ankle. And for you, Zacho, if your Achilles are tight or your ankles are quite tight because of the, the growth, that's quite a nice exercise to do to loosen up your ankle. Okay, and just mobilizing your Achilles. But do it very, very slowly. Don't start with like an extreme stretch. Just do nice and easy, nice and easy. Move back a centimeter, nice and easy. Now with your calves, okay, when we're on the side of the pitch, we tend to do this one. But in terms of getting a good stretch, that's not really very good. I use the stairs at home for this one. I'm just going to get a step. Sorry, guys. I need to right. try and use this. Okay. 
here is strong enough for me to use. Imagine this is a stair in your house. Okay. It doesn't break. So, okay, what you do is you put your ball of your foot on the edge of the stair and then drop your path down there to stretch. Okay. That is a much, much better stretch than you will get from that standing up one. Okay, because you're lengthening your calf muscle a lot more. Okay, so you do that for 30 seconds, change, do the other side, and then do another 30 seconds on the other side. Okay. Now also, let's see if I can do it on this thing. With your stairs, especially if you're getting Achilles problems and things like that. And you guys also play more and more, or train more and more on 3Gs and 4Gs, don't you? Now, one of the things with that is that can put a little bit of extra pressure on your Achilles. So a little, a simple little exercise you can do is walk down the stairs backwards, okay? So you put the, like I just showed you there, you put the ball of your foot on the edge of the step, um, have your foot up and then stretch it down like I just did, but you count four every time you step down. So it's one, two, three, four. And then you put your next foot on the next step. One, two, three, four. So you stretch it down slowly. If you walk down a flight of stairs like that once a day, it'd be really good for keeping your Achilles strong keeping your calf nice and stretched, okay? You can have a little try of that now if you want, guys. Try walking down some stairs backwards. I'll show you just on this table how you do it. So you go into that position there, and then it's one, two, three, four. Up. Right, the good thing about the stairs is you can use your arms just to touch the side just to get your balance in you. One, two, three, four, like that. And it just loads, it puts a little bit of load into your Achilles and your calf and helps you stretch it. So that's really important. But just a simple way of doing it, obviously, as long as probably not the first time you get out of bed and walk downstairs in the morning, but have a little practice of doing that. Just count to four. One, two, three, four. Apparently, the, the physio I got the idea from stole it from Arsenal. He said Arsenal were using that with their players and it cleared up almost all of their Achilles injuries. Okay, so that's something important. Okay, next. So we've done ankles and we've done calves. Those little tricks, guys, those little secrets are really, really good ones. And then next, quads. So again, you can work on your balance, make sure that they're straight. Knees together, hold with your hold your ankle with your outside hand. Knees together, heel to your bottom. Okay, again, hold the big key. Breathe into the muscle, nice and relaxed. Feel the muscle relaxing. And then breathe out for the next 15 just to get some length. If you want to, you can do it lying down. So stretch your arm out so you've got something to lean on. Okay, so your head's in a good position, you're nice and comfortable. You always need to be in a good comfortable position when you're stretching and you're working like this. And then you go outside and you do it lying down. Breathing all the time. You can feel just relaxing now after I've done that halfway through the stretch. And then just lengthen the stretch a little bit as I'm breathing out and relaxing. Just get a little bit more of a stretch. Okay. So I can do it like that if I want. Now I'll show you a more powerful stretch like that in a second as well. Okay. If you want to with your hamstrings, if you've got a surface you can use, not too high, you can start to work on your hamstrings. 
if your hamstrings are really tight, you can maybe start with a bit more of a bent knee, get some um, length into the, into the middle of the hamstring. You can do a bent knee like that to get you hold for 30. And then the next time you do it, I'll do my left now with a bent knee. You don't want to end going too slow. Right. And straight leg. Not forcing it. Hamstrings, you've got to be really careful. You want to get the stretch, and it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but make sure you're not, um, make sure you're not pushing too hard. With it. Okay. Always breathing, always relaxing. Okay. Now a little bit of a introduction to, like a little bit of a nice easy one to just to start stretching your groin. Have your toes out like that, and just knees over to one side. Again, both feet flat on the floor. Body in a nice balanced position. Then have your toes straight like that. You just put ease into it a little bit more. Again, a little bit more of a powerful, powerful stretch in your groin. If you do both of those, do 30 on the first one, 30 on the second one. Ease into that. And again, breathing, relaxing. Okay, nice easy one for your glutes now. Just to start off with, just hug your, hug your knee into your chest and pull it towards you. Okay. Show you the other side because it's easier. Okay. And you should feel that just starting to come down there into your glutes. That's a nice easy one. That's just to loosen up your glutes. If you don't feel the stretch on this, brilliant. It means you've got good flexibility down there anyway. And then I'm going to show you some working on your knee. Now, whenever you're working on your knee, guys, especially if you're working at home, you need to have something comfortable underneath it so that you can, so that you're protecting your knee. So you shouldn't be kneeling on hard surfaces ever. And even with a with carpet, you want to put a cushion down, something comfortable to knee. Okay. So, from this position here, there's a series of stretches you can do. We did some of them after we did the physical Zoom session, but this is how you would use it in developing your flexibility. Now, your hip flexor here, so I'll do it the other way around so you can see it. Okay. This muscle here down the front of your hip is called your hip flexor. That's really, really important for football. It gets very tight with. Um, exercise like striking a ball gets very tight with um, skills on the ball. Okay, so what you need to do is from there, ease forward like that. That's like the basic easy stretch. If you can, try and go forward like that, get your hand down, other hand on your knee, and ease into that stretch like that. How long would we hold for? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, good. And you might just ease into it more for the second fifteen seconds. From there, you see how tight my hamstrings are. You rock back and try and get that leg as straight as you can. Mine doesn't go very straight because my hamstrings are ridiculously tight. And then you hold it like that. And from there, just to give this a little bit more of a stretch, I'm going to push that forward. So I'm going to twist my upper body, lean forward, and rest my hands on that knee. Evie, can you just close this door, please? Sorry, guys. Again, 30. Now from there, I take this foot and bring it in. I take this foot and bring it out. Now I'm just going to do a little bit more of a bigger stretch on my groin now. I'm going to that position like that. On my hands like this and just relax into that and stretch my groin. So I do both sides now and being at the same time. Again, 30 seconds. Now, uh, coming back to this position, 
and I said there'd be a more powerful stretch for your quads. Okay, so from here I can go into a quad stretch. So what I do is that. Again, the quads are pretty tight. So I go into that position, and then I bring my heel up towards my bum. So at the moment I'm not there. First 15 is getting that stretch. And I lean forward, easy into it a bit more, trying to get my heel towards my back. And rock back. That is really important. You've got a cushion on your knee. Okay. And then I'm going to a glute stretch with you now. Again, cushion so that your head's always comfortable. Your head should always be nice and relaxed if you're doing stretches on the floor. I showed you that with the um, arm for when you're doing your quads. Okay, I'll show you a couple of glute stretches now. You lie down like that. Foot goes over your um, your other leg. You put your hand through the gap, hand around the outside, and give yourself a figure of four leg So Again, just doing that first 15 seconds. And the next 15 seconds, just try and pull your leg into you a little bit more. And you feel like that in your glutes. Okay? And then the second glute stretch would be this one. So you cross your legs over, grab both your ankles, pull your feet out, and pull your knees in. This one's an even more powerful stretch, and you'll feel it right in the middle of your backside. But Again, really good one. So that's pretty much all the lower lower body ones, but you need to make sure you're working on your upper body as well. You need to make sure your neck, shoulders, arms, and also how you can move to the side and how you bend to the side. So, so I'll show you an upper body um, range of stretches, but then also really importantly, I'll show you how to get mobility in your shoulders and also twisting in the middle of your body, okay? When you move, most of your twisting comes from here. You need to make sure this moves really well, okay? So I'll show you some stretches. But to start with, because I'm, I'm doing upper body, I'll just ease that up a bit so you can see my upper body if I come back to here, okay? From there, do 10 circles backwards. It's nice, big, loose ones. 10 forwards. Once you've done those, squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears and let them drop down heavy. Okay? This just tries to relax the, your neck muscles and your shoulders. Squeeze it up, relax it down. Okay? From there, just try and touch your ear on one shoulder. With these, you don't need to hold for 30, you can just hold for about 10. Squeeze the middle, 10 the other side. And then forward. Not backwards, because you don't want to crunch the small bones in your neck. If you need to get a little bit more movement in your neck, hold your hand, opposite hand down there. Same stretch, but just reach over the far side of your head. Don't pull it hard. You just ease your, head, your neck over and really get a good stretch down that side of your neck. So again, don't force it nice and easy. You're just trying to get a little bit more movement. Okay. Good one now for your sides. Okay. Push your hands like that above your head and hold the back of your elbows. And then keep your feet flat. You're just going to ease sideways like that. Hold it for about six. Back to the middle. Six to the other side. And to the middle. And then you do it again that side, and again that side. That just eases out these muscles. If, if your side muscles are really tight, 
it will go into your hips. Your hips are really tight, it can affect all your muscles around there, affect your knees, and also give you more injuries. Your hips have to be able to move really well. Okay. The next one, arm across your round your neck, just push on the back of your shoulder. Again, 30 on there, 30 on there. Back of your arms, keep your arms working well, especially if you're doing upper body work and you're doing press ups and things like that. Arm over your head, just pull on the back of your elbow down there to easily to stretch your triceps. Okay, then from there, just stretching your upper back. Interlock your fingers like that, turn them out, and stretch forward, chin down to your chest, so you're just looking after your neck. And then try and stretch out your pecs a little bit. See, mine are pretty tight. So interlock our fingers and pull back. Okay. Next, just working on the sides and your hips. Hands by your sides, you're just going to ease down, ease down. So there, and to there. We're in that sort of timing, about one, two, three, each side. Just get a little bit of movement and a little bit of a stretch. Okay. Now linking in with that work down the sides of your legs, that um, roller in work you're going to do. I'll show you a stretch where you can get that, that side of that hip. I'll have to just ease that down a little bit. Okay. So what you do, guys, is you cross your feet over like that, twist. And then lean forward, and you get a stretch on that outside hip. This is probably the best stretch that I've ever seen for that. It's a really hard muscle to stretch. Okay. Then 30 on there, cross over the other side, and then. Okay. And then the last ones, I'll show you this for your upper body and your upper back. Let's go right down here. Okay, so get into this position like that. Need a cushion, always have your hand, your head in a comfortable position for your stretching. So knees, knees at right angles here, head on the cushion, nice and snug. And then this is to move, this is to move your shoulders well. Again, especially if you're doing upper body work and as you get a little bit older, you might be starting to do weights. So just getting your Shoulders and your upper back moving well. This one, bring your hand up to your head and then bring it all the way around and back to your hand. Okay, you do six of them and then the next one, keeping everything flat on the floor, I'm just going to try and twist through the middle of my back. Now I'm just going to take a bent arm and I'm just going to twist from here. Nice and easy. Now I come back. And then next time, I'm just going to try and go a little bit more. Nice and relaxed. Come back. Again, a little bit more again. Come back. A little bit more. Come back. So do that for six. So do both of those for six. So six big circles just to loosen off the shoulder, and then six little rotations um, along the back. Now, if you can do these things, guys, it takes about, including the rolling, once you can do it and you know what you're doing with that type of circuit, you can do that in about 25 minutes. So if you can add that in a couple of times, and it's really, really important that you, really, really important that you do it in these years whilst you're sort of starting to grow, some of you are in the middle of growth and those type of things, really important that you do this probably two or three times a week. As it stands at the moment, some of you are doing it zero. So if you did it once, that's a big improvement. So if you can do it two or three times a week, Dan Morales, you would definitely be a three-timer. Zacho, because of your ongoing sort of issues, you'd be a three-timer. And I would say, yeah, 
for the U2 in particular, but the rest of you need to try and incorporate that as best you can. If you, if you haven't got time to do all, sort of, all of those exercises top to bottom, then maybe do half of just the lower body. Okay. So remember, the 30 seconds is really important. Okay. Would you do that as a warm-up for the game? No. Yes, we need to know. No. Okay, why not? Why would that not be very good before a game? Because it's not very specific to what you're about to do. Good, good word there, Nigel. Yeah, not very specific to what you're about to do. That's really important. That's why you use dynamics, because you're moving and doing those things. These stretches, this is actually a session, okay? It's a flexibility session. So it does take something out of your body because you're trying to re kind of remodel your body and try and reset your muscle. So within that, um, it's not the best preparation to actually play. It's a good way of maintaining your body and looking at your body. Okay. Has anyone got any questions about that, guys? Or does anyone have like a body part that they think that gives me problems all the time and we haven't covered something to do with that? Any questions about anything, guys? To do with injuries, to do with training, to do with stuff you're doing? Just fire away, guys. You don't need to, you don't need to put your hand up. Okay. Is there training this week again on Thursday? Or? Um, we, I believe, not, don't quote me 100%, but I believe because of the number of injuries and everything like that, We've said not to train Thursday, and if you can, do this stretching session as well as the work that you want to do if you're fit, okay? okay? Your own work is what I believe Scott and Gemma have sent out. If I'm wrong on that, apologies guys, but that's what I understood it to be. And Scott's not in today, so I should be disturbing him. You're about to ask us a brilliant question there, Dan. Or are you messing around with your screen? No, I was just going to say that when I'm doing push-ups, my elbows hurt sometimes. Okay. Try, don't, try not to go through the full range of movement, movement to start with. But I, my, mine do as well, actually, and my shoulders do. So what i found that's quite helpful for me is that I don't do a full press-up on the first couple of goes. So I'll do sort of there and there and then I'll work into it a little bit more. So there's one thing. It could be hand placement as well. Okay. Yeah. Depends where you're stronger. Some people who've got really strong triceps go narrow. Some people I do. Got stronger pecs go wider. So it might be that where you're putting your hands. I do wide push-ups, then I'll do normal ones, and I'll do military, and then I'll do diamond. I'll do all of them. Oh, okay. And do, do they, do all of it hurt your elbows? Or is it, certain? it hurts, like, my elbows, mostly, like, the diamond and the military ones, where yeah. you've got your hands quite close. Yeah, 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 they will do, because what's probably happening there is your triceps are maybe not as strong at supporting you as your pecs. So those narrow and the diamond exaggerate that part of your arm more. So by doing that, your triceps are probably not quite as strong to support you. So your elbow joint is having to do some of the work there, which is probably why it's hurting you. Yeah, and it's probably because I've been doing them every day as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that. Rest days are really important. Okay, you've got to work hard, but you've also got to work smart, guys. So your body does need chance to recover. I was showing you there, but I don't do press-ups every day. I do them every other day. So it might be better to train harder for one day, but then have a rest day so your body can recover. Okay, but that's good. That's good that you, you asked that, good that you spotted it. But if you're going to do, if you wanted to do stuff every day, mix up the exercises. So you're not doing the exact same movements, exact same muscles every day. Okay, try and mix them up. 
That's good from you. Dan. Anyone got any questions about what they're currently doing or if they wanted to do something? Uh, if they wanted to add a bit more into their work at home or anyone got any questions about the work you're doing at home? Really important to understand how to do these things well. Okay. You're probably looking at it going, oh, I'd like to be stronger, I'd like to be faster, I want to be a little bit fitter, or any of those type of things. They're all good. And if you've got that motivation, brilliant. It's just when you're young, understanding how your body works and understanding how to do the exercises is quite difficult. You need quite a lot of experience and messing up things and doing that type of thing to work out what's best for you. Sometimes if you've got some advice, that can just shortcut it a little bit. So if, you, if something does come up, guys, and you think, I need, I want to know a little bit more about what I'm doing at home, just put a message on the WhatsApp group. Usually it'll come back to me on this type of, this type of stuff, and I'll try and give you some advice to help. Carrie, are you going to ask something, mate? Or are you just keeping the sun off your screen? I was just keeping the sun off my screen. <laughs> okay. Couldn't tell if you Okay. Guys, if there's nothing else, we'll finish the session there. I'll email this to all of you so you can see. Okay, I've tried to go through it a little bit quick because I didn't think you wanted to see me stretch every muscle both sides for 30 seconds every time. Hopefully I've explained how to do it well. Um, but if you've got any questions, let me know. But we'll send you um, we'll send you this recording. You can see it. All right. Cheers. You're welcome, guys. Work well, work smart. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What he's trying to get is, oh, Marley, you got to tell a joke for the last one in.